First of all, let me add my own happy Thanksgiving. Again, it is such a, a gift for this congregation to gather this wonderful tradition of, uh, of being together before Thanksgiving. Uh, this week, kind of getting ready for Thanksgiving, uh, Mark and I worked out on Monday. Uh, we did this, both of us did the same class. It's called Afterburn, and it's exactly how it sounds. It's terrible. Um, it's this high, crazy, fast-paced, demanding workout, usually with a set of exercises that you rotate through in a set of intervals, and there are weights and there are aerobic exercises, all designed to get your heart rate up. Well, we both went to the same class, but I went earlier and Mark went later, and afterwards we were kind of high-fiving between classes, and I said, you are in for a challenge. Have fun. I've already done it. Well, it turns out, though, his workout wasn't quite as challenging as mine. See, my trainer added what my trainer calls a finisher to our workout, a finisher that she told me we should be thankful for. <laughs> now, um, after all the exercises were done, she added 55 burpees. Okay, if you don't know what a burpee is, it's an exercise named in the 1930s for an American physiologist, uh, Royal Burpee, and he created this burpee as a way that they could measure fitness. Now, it is way up there in my least favorite exercises, especially at the end of Afterburn. Uh, I, I thought about showing you a, a burpee or making Mark come up and do 55 because I did those earlier in the week, but I, I didn't do that. Uh, but I, I've got one of these to show you. Here's a little, little video here. This is what it, it, it looks like. You go down and you go up and, and you keep, and, and this, we should just keep letting this tape roll because that's how it felt when you were doing 55 of those. All right, you can turn that off. I don't want to see it anymore. More, right. <laughs> See, I am not thankful for burpees. Not 55 of them, not at the end of the class. They hurt when I'm doing them, and they hurt the next day. And I really don't care the good effects that they might have. I am not thankful for burpees. I'm just not. Now, we heard some incredible testimonies tonight. And as I introduced uh, them, I asked you to think about your own testimony, what you would be sharing if you were up here thinking about God's faithfulness. But I wonder if maybe you've had some burpees, some things that you are definitely not thankful for. You've had some major disappointments. This is the first holiday that there's an empty chair. You have a child who's lost their way. The chemo isn't working. You found out this week you didn't get into your first choice of college. Your son is facing a divorce. Or you simply can't beat your addiction. Sometimes it's really hard to think Thanksgiving. But Paul gives us this incredible way to train to get ready for Thanksgiving, no matter how your day or your week or your month or even how your year or your life is going. And Mike mentioned it in his testimony. It's from 1 Thessalonians 5. This is what it says. Rejoice Always pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, it's a pretty straightforward list. And every letter that Paul writes, it's a wonderful thing to do to look at each one of his letters because he ends all of them with a little section called Perinesis which is practical wisdom for people who follow Jesus. When he writes this, Paul is, is developing and discipling people by his words. And they're very 
straightforward words on how to live. Paul's words, though, are not just an action list. Paul is telling the people what is natural for the believer who has put their trust in God. So let's look at the list again. He says, rejoice always. You know, not just when things are going your way, not just when everything is great, always. Paul writes this letter as one who really understands what it's like for things to not be going well. He begins this letter this way. He says this, he says, we had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. Paul gets it. And so these new believers in Thessalonica, there were consequences for them when they said yes to following Jesus. But Paul is inviting them to this new way of life. Jesus had warned the same thing. He said, in this world, you will have troubles. There will be moments where you don't want to say you're thankful. But Paul's inviting them, he's inviting you to a new way of life. Where what's on the outside can't define you, but what's on the inside, your core your commitment to Christ does. Paul knows that this is the key to rejoicing. See, joy doesn't come from what's happening around you. It comes from a conviction deep, deep inside of you. And this kind of joy isn't about emotional euphoria. It's not even about unrealistic denial. It's this inner attitude of being pleased because God's at work and God's in charge no matter what might happen. See, you can rejoice always when you know that a God who loves you is always with you and always for you. Next he says this, he says, pray continually. You stay connected to God and you don't let anything else define you by praying continually. Now here's a question. Does that mean you have to quit your job? Does that mean you have to lock your children in their rooms if you're going to pray continually? No. But it does mean that as you go about your day, you turn to God. You turn to him when things are good. You turn to him when things are difficult. You turn to him when things are boring. You turn to him when things are, are chaotic. You pray. You ask. You know that your relationship with him as you pray is your, your true north. You pray and you ask and you know that your relationship with him is the defining core of your life. Finally, when you rejoice always and you pray continually, you can, and the last thing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's very important to look at what Paul says and what he doesn't say. He does not say give thanks for all circumstances. Hear that very clearly. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. There are definitely things that happen to us that we are not thankful for. Amen? Right. But we can still, Paul says, give thanks. I read a story today in, in uh, the New York Times about a Thanksgiving dinner in New York and it had all the classics. It had turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy and cranberry sauce. 
but it wasn't your ordinary Thanksgiving dinner. See, Jodell Lewis, a local comedian, he, he wanted to do something different for Thanksgiving. And after months of planning, they decided to go ahead with it. They hosted a, a Thanksgiving dinner, bird and all, on a Brooklyn-bound L train. Now, they did it this past Sunday when they knew that there were enough delays that it would allow them time to stage this, this meal. The New York City subway, of course, has seen all kinds of stunts, but never this one. At the delay, they, they got everything, all the dishes, all the tables, all the glasses, all the serving utensils. They got it all set up very quickly. And when the train took off again, they took a few minutes and they began to serve the meal to the planners, but also to every stranger that got on at each and every stop. Here's a picture. This entire Thanksgiving meal took about one hour. It took them from Union Square all the way to Rockaway Parkway. Then they cleaned it up and they gave some of the leftovers to the homeless. This comedian said it was amazing to provide a classic New York City moment. But in an hour, the people were dispersed and back to their normal chaotic, busy New York lives. Sometimes that's the way we treat Thanksgiving. We rush in to make the meal and we get it on the table and we get it eaten and we get it cleaned up. Check, 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 check. It's like a hit and run. Tomorrow. Don't get up from your table too quickly. Enjoy the meal. Enjoy the moment. But you know, Thanksgiving isn't simply a meal. It's a way of life. It's what Paul is trying to tell us. But that's also the way, unfortunately, we treat giving thanks. We do it every once in a while, but, but not always, not in all circumstances. We get away from it too quickly. This year especially, we're going to feel an abrupt whiplash to Christmas after Thanksgiving. Christmas is coming, but I would say to you, do not turn the page of the calendar too quickly. Don't get up from the Thanksgiving meal too fast. Make your Thanksgiving list before you make your Christmas list. You know, we'd all do better off if we made our Thanksgiving list before we get to our Christmas list. And maybe moms and dads, that's especially good for you. Go home tonight and do up your Thanksgiving list before you do up your Christmas list. See, Paul knew that Thanksgiving should be at the center of our heart when Jesus is at the center of our heart. So I want to give you a Thanksgiving homework assignment. First, memorize this verse. Let's say it. You know, they say if you say something three times, you're going to have it memorized. Let's say it three times. Let's go. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's one. Ready? Number two. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And the third one, this is going to get you, it's going to be memorized. Ready? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus.
That's homework assignment number one. Number two, make your list. Make that Thanksgiving list tomorrow. And I suspect if you get honest and if you take your time and you don't get up from the table too quickly, it will be a very, very long list. Even if you've had a hard year. But remember, as you make that list, don't just be thankful for the things. Be thankful for the one who gave them to you. Be sure to thank the one who made it all possible. God, we want to be thankful people, and we can be because of what you've done for us. You loved us so much that you sent your son. Because of that, we can rejoice always. We can pray continually. And we can give thanks in all circumstances. No matter what we experience. We trust you. And we invite you to use us to show the world who we are as we live as your thankful people God, tomorrow as we set our Thanksgiving tables, we leave a seat for your son, Jesus, who's the very one who allows us to rejoice and to pray and to give thanks. God, we're thankful people pray in the name of your son, Jesus.